Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video we're going to show how to do parasolids on the Prototrack SMX control. You'll notice that I'm using my demo box here, but keep in mind the demo box can be an SMX or an SLX. Um, and right now I have it in the SMX mode. All right, so as you're going to see, I'm going to show you how to do everything that you need to know. Um, you have to start out by having your uh, parasolid model on either a memory stick or use the network and you're going to need a mouse in this case I have a wired mouse but you can use a wireless mouse as well and it'll work so let's get started and let me show you how to do this okay so here I am on the main screen and the first thing I want to point out is I am using a mouse so you'll see my cursor as it moves around on the screen the cursor allows me to use these buttons here instead of have to actually physically push the buttons below so I'm gonna to go to program in and out mode and I want to open a program and you'll notice I'm in the folder for all my parasolid files. In this folder, you'll notice that it says X underscore T samples. So that's telling me that if I make a program in solid model, I have to save with that extension in order for the prototrack to read it. So what I'm going to do is just double click on this part right here and you're going to notice that my solid model shows up automatically. Now I can select any part of the six sides to be the part that I want a machine facing up. And for now, just so you know, I'm not gonna do this side of the part. I think you'll learn more by doing this side of the part. So what it wants me to do is it wants me to select a surface that's pointing up. So you'll notice when I highlight this, all I have to do is push OK, and it squares the block up on the X axis. Now I can use this button here to select any axis to be facing up or I could even rotate the part 90 degrees at a time depending on how I want to hold it. But once I have it the way I want it oriented, simply hit OK. In here it's asking me is the part that I've just highlighted my Z0, which it is. If not, I would select a different surface. I'm going to hit OK one more time. Now what it needs to know is where I want to call my part 0. So you'll see you have three choices here. And what I'm going to do is use the center of the part. So I'm going to select C, and then click on that geometry and you'll notice my zero reference shows up and you'll also see that it knows where my cursor is now. So I'll select continue. In this screen it's allowing me to add to the print so that I can maybe walk on or off of a part. For instance if I go to new point I could click on any intersection and then drag a line out and say I want to start out there and I could go back to that intersection and walk back off this way. For this demonstration, I'm not going to cut the outside of the part um, because you'll get the idea from everything I'm doing on the inside. So I don't really need this part, but I also wanted to point out that there is a button for hide a line. And what that does, all I got to do is double click and anything that I don't want will also get out of the way. There's an inquire geometry button in here, which if I click on something like a circle, it'll tell me the diameter of that hole and the location for the center of the hole. If I push continue, it takes me to the programming mode. So in here, it's asking, what do I want to do first? And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some drilling, and I want to drill these four holes. Simply highlight the holes, and then up here at the top where it says event, I'll click on that. And you'll see in here that it has my X and Y locations, and it's asking for the rest of the information. So first of all, it wants to know if I'm drilling or boring, and I'm just drilling. Okay. These two answers are in there already, and then it wants to know my Z rapid point. Now the beauty of the solid model is at any time I can go back to the model here, and I can select on a surface. But before I do that, I want to point out this button here that says set Z. What that's for is it allows me to program what I want my rapid points and my through depths to be. So if I don't like 100 thousandths, I could simply say I want that to be 50. And as you'll see here in a minute, when I click on a surface, it's giving me the choice of adding an offset or going to the exact number. I want to add an offset, so I put the 50 thousandths in my Z Rapid right here. Now, if I was going to drill these holes all the way through, I'd go back to the solid model, flip it over and touch the other surface, and then say with an offset. And it's going to know exactly how deep it has to go for the diameter of that hole and the point of the drill to get all the way through plus 30 thousandths because that's what's in my set Z. Number of pecs, not really important in the demonstration, but normally it would be. My RPM, my feed rate, 
and my tool number. And you'll notice that all of those circles are now green. So I simply hit the event key and I get my other choices back. It says, what do you want to do next? So let's say that what I want to do is there's a uh, O-ring groove right here that goes around this part. So let's say I want to cut that. What I would do is I would say I want to do a profile. I want to chain events. I'm going to start with this one. And then the direction that I go is going to determine whether I'm climb milling or conventionally milling this line, right? So I'm going to go this way so that it'll climb mill. Eh, I missed a button. There we go. And as it all highlights here, then I just go back to event. And again, I'm going to start filling in the information it doesn't know, right? Now, by now, I know this is 50,000, so I don't have to use the solid every time. But what I don't know is the depth of that groove. So I'm going to go back to my model. I'm going to flip it back over. And then in here, I'm going to actually zoom this up. So there are several ways to zoom, but I think this is the easiest one of them. And then I just go back to my selection button, and I'm going to touch inside of that groove. See that, how it highlights? And that's the depth I want to go to. So in here, I'm going to say with no offset, and you're going to see that it tells me that it's 55 thousandths deep. The tool offset is, of course, to the left, which is climb milling. I'm going to do it in one pass. I don't need a finish cut in this case. I'm going to put in my RPM and my feed rates. Tool number two. Everything turns green. Hit the select key. I'm done with that part. And now I've got this big pocket to do in here that goes almost to the depth of the floor. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say I want to make a pocket. I want to chain events. The same kind of procedure. I'm going to start with the first piece, like so, touch the next piece. Everything highlights, go back up here. Again, my Z rapid is still 50, so I'm just going to punch it in this time. But my Z end is what I don't know, so I'm going to touch the floor. No offset. Oops, this one. What's my depth in at 1 and 7 eighths? How many passes I need? Right, my entry mode, I usually would like to zigzag to get into there. I'm going to leave a finish cut of 10 thousandths. I'm going to use 2500 as my RPM for both rough and finish. My plunge feed rate, my machining feed rate, my finish feed rate, tool number three. Everything here is green. Hit the event key again. The last thing I have to do is cut this circle. And there's also a like a counter bore around this circle. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this as a profile and the floor will drop out, right? So I'm going to say profile, no, click, go up to the top. Once again, Z rapid. This time I don't know what my Z rapid is. So I would go back to my solid model and say, hey, I want to wrap it to this surface with an offset. It's going to take 50 thousandths off the number on that floor. If I go back into here and flip it over so that I can click on the opposite side. So go back to select here, click on this side. Say I want to do this with an offset. It puts in the depth for that. It knows the radius of the hole. Just hit the set key. I'm going to climb middle of this as well. Tool offset is going to be on the left. My number of passes is going to be just one. My finish cut, 10 thousandths. And then I'm going to keep my RPMs and all that stuff basically the same as what I was doing before because I'm going to use the tools, the same tools for it as well. Okay, so 2015, still tool number three. And then I have one last part to this, and that's going to be this counter bore right here. So that's also a circular profile. And the difference is that I'm just going to click on that circle, come up here. Again, come down here. My Z rapid is going to be the same as it was before. If you're unsure of what it is, simply flip it over and touch the floor again with an offset. Same thing with the Z end. Flip it back over. Touch the floor with no offset, right? Whoops, I actually did that wrong. I apologize. I didn't want to do that that way because I actually need to get it from this side. And I need to catch that surface right there with no offset. So sorry about that mistake. My radius is in here. Again, I'm going counterclockwise, tool left. 
I can do it in one pass, same finish cut, right? And then my RPMs and all that stuff are gonna stay the same. Tool number is gonna stay the same and all of the work that I need to do now is finished in green. Last but not least, I'm gonna hit the event key. And at this point I'm done programming, so I'm gonna hit end solid. It's gonna say, are you sure you wanna end? I'm gonna say yes. And at that point, you'll see that when I go to the program mode, I've actually got a program in here showing everything that I did one event at a time. If I push the look button, it'll show me the geometry of what I wanna make. And so my next thing that I would do is I would simply hit the mode key and I'd go to setup mode and now I would describe the tools that I wanna use for this, right? So if I say that um, my first tool is a drill bit, right? I would touch it off, tell it that it's a drill. My second tool is an end mill. My third tool is also an end mill. And from there I can push return, check my tool path. You'll see all the depths in all of my cuts for my tool path. You see my peck drilling, everything there looks good, right? I'm gonna hit the back key. If I go to verify part, I'm gonna define my stock a little bigger than I have here. So I'm gonna go minus three and minus 1.25 and then the Z bottom minus, actually that's fine, I'm gonna leave that where it is. And then go three inches here. 1.25 there, and the top of the part is Z0. Hit return, make part. And then let's just slow it down a little bit in here and say verify part. And you're gonna see it drill the holes, followed by the overing groove, followed by the machining part. And you're gonna have multiple passes in here. For the record, I kind of made up the tool sizes in my head. And so as you can see, the O-ring groove is probably a little bit oversized, but I know you get the idea how it works. So um, I don't see any reason to change it at this point. Once it gets to the final pass down here in the floor, then it's going to actually take one cut all the way around the outside like it normally would if I programmed it by hand. Gotta be just about there now. There's my wall cleanup, and it's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but it actually finished the hole in here as well. Once it's done, I can just hit exit. Everything in here looks good. And now I'm ready to actually go to the run mode and make the part. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. If I've got a solid model, you got to keep a couple things in mind. First of all, I can machine any of the six sides just by clicking on which one is up in the very beginning of the process. Secondly, remember that although the solid model has all the lines available, I still can only cut two and a half D parts for full 3D contouring. I'm going to need to use a CAD CAM system, but because most parts are actually flat, you're gonna find that for the cost of this, it's very beneficial. As easy as it is to program a prototrack, it's still easier if I've already got all the information electronically and can just download it and click on it as you saw me do in the video. So hopefully this gets you up and running. If you have questions, feel free to comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, remember to keep on tracking. Thanks for watching.